Went down to my local nursery the other day, picked up a feather rock. Not exactly literally picked it up. I mean, I bought it. They offered to deliver it. It cost me about 40 cents a pound. But it's not very heavy, and I figured I could handle it myself. Now, most of the time, rocks are pretty low maintenance items in the landscape, but feather rock has some unique characteristics that lend itself to what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it into a planter, a living boulder. When I select a rock for this purpose, I try to select one that looks like a mountain, and then I begin carving pockets into it to insert my plants. Now, the plants are all sedums and hens and chicks, plants that will take hot, dry locations because this rock is going to be well drained. You'll notice I've laid out a tarp. This is, again, volcanic glass, and I want to pick up all the crumbs when I'm done so that I and my children don't wind up finding them with our bare feet in the summertime. And then I begin carving the rock. I always start at the top. The plants I've selected tend to drape and grow downward. Also, don't pry on this rock. Don't drive the chisel in and then pull back on it because sometimes you'll split off a whole section of this stone. It's very soft. When you need to start cleaning out the grit, just scrape it out with your chisel. Once we've got the hole sufficiently large enough to accommodate the plant we're putting into it, scrape it out as best you can and we're ready to plant. The first plant I'm going to put in is this Sedum elecambianum. And I'm also going to add some acrylamide copolymers. This is a plastic which actually absorbs 400 times its weight in water. And I put a little bit in the bottom of each hole to help hold moisture in the planting hole because this rock is going to get dry. The next step is to put a little potting soil inside our cavity. You'll notice that the plant doesn't quite fit into that hole, but that's all right. With a sedum, we can be kind of rough to its roots. And gently work a little of that potting soil off until we have a soil ball that neatly fits inside our cavity. Press it in rather firmly. Be careful, don't cut yourself. And then add enough potting soil to fill the hole. I always put these plants in one at a time. That way I can step back, take a look at it, and see what I'd like to put in next. And looking at this, I'd like to come right over here and put in a hens and chick. All of the plants that we've used are heat and drought tolerant. Sedum elecambianum and Sedum tricolor will both cascade down the rock. And you'll note that they have fairly small leaves, so they stay in scale with the size of our boulder. Over here we have a hen and chick or house leek, it's called sometimes. They also will cascade down the rock, almost look like a miniature rose. Our next step is to take the boulder to its permanent resting place in the landscape. We need to seed it firmly. When placing your living boulder in the landscape, be sure and seed it firmly. We don't want it wiggling around at all. And another thing, keep it far enough away from the walk that nobody's going to brush up against it. Remember, these rocks are somewhat sharp. Once it's established in the landscape, you won't have to water it as much as you do initially. But gradually, the roots will get all through the potting soil and they'll even grow into the rock itself, making it literally a living boulder. It'll be a unique and interesting part of your landscape.